Am I audible? Hi guys, very good evening. This is Sundar Ravindranathan here. Hi guys, very good evening. How are you guys? How is everybody doing? Hi, hi Dinesh, hi Pranjal, hi Chandra, Tran Chandra, Saurya, Manju, Vandana, so many. Lovely, lovely to see all of you guys. I am fine, Niranjan. How are you? You tell me. <clears throat> So by the way guys, I hope all you guys are staying very very safe and healthy, all at home, right? Thank you Ramachari. Thank you Likit. At last I corrected myself, is it not? Lovely, lovely, lovely kids. Super. So, you know what guys, today it's going to be very very interesting. The reason is the topic is like that. Tracing changes through a thousand years. See, take a period, kind of 700 to, uh, uh, you know, 1750. If we go scroll through kind of a thousand years, if we want to know what kind of developments happened. Alright, in 700 AD, alright, it, it would have been, the developments would have been very, very less. But over a period of time, lot of changes would have happened and here we are in 2020, enjoying all the benefits. However, if I need to go back and study what happened at that time, is it that easy? That is what we are going to speak about today. Okay, remember yesterday uh, uh, I was speaking to you guys about uh, uh, archaeology? Something similar. Getting it guys? Superb. Now my dear kids, let us move on. Everyone in, right? Yes, yes, there. That is my job, right? Okay, guys. For people who are new to Vedanta Young Wonders, we are a channel dedicated to 6th, 7th and 8th grades. And what we do here, we would, we would see, you know, us posting videos on a daily basis and we would be covering uh, your entire syllabus of math, science, social studies and English. English, with respect to English, it's grammar. And uh, yes, of course, I take social studies and grammar. Of English, of course. So, uh, we have excellent master teachers who will be handling this. Every day you will have one one session for 6th graders, 7th graders and 8th graders. Beautifully, guys. Right? So, guys, if you are new to this uh, channel, please subscribe to us. I am sure you won't be disappointed. You're going to have lots of fun and you will find that even now, after 20-25 minutes, I will conduct a detailed quiz. A lovely quiz which you can participate and that will be in Menti platform. Right? So hang on and watch out. Super! Rupam, schedule, everything is perfectly on track, right? That is why you guys are uh, able to, you know, attend these sessions. Okay, good evening, Ajay. Lovely, my dear kids. Let's move on. So, tracing back, tracing the past over, uh, you know, the changes over the past thousand years. How do I find out what happened at that time? It's not archaeology. It's more of studying history. And what are the ways in which I can study history? If I want to know how was the you know map of India before 1000 years? How can I know that? My dear kids, I'm going to show you something very interesting. Uh, the map before that, what are we going to deal now? So we will see from a map perspective, what were the different types of maps on India that was there. I will show you two different maps. You yourself will be amazed how our map of India was looked at in completely different way. And number two, there are terminologies what was used in completely different way. Guys, right now who is a foreigner according to you? Can you type who is a foreigner according to you? I am fine Rithik. Who is a foreigner guys? Super Radhika. Awesome. Congratulations. You know, all the very best. Advanced congratulations. Okay. A foreigner is someone who is not from India. But do you know in olden days, in olden days, 
if some person comes from another village to this village, he is a foreigner for that village. So the word foreigner was used in different contexts. That is what is mentioned here, new and old terminologies. Okay? Now, so what are the different tools that they used for studying history? Paper, manuscripts, paintings, miniature paintings. How can miniature paintings show something? Because they would have painted something about history, right? With us, you can <coughs> study tons and tons of information. Then, what are the difficulties with respect to painting? That also we will see. And what are the chronicles that were written? Alright, that's so the session is going to be interesting, guys. Be ready. Here we go. <coughs> Alright, guys, look at the map. Both the maps are maps of India. Would you really believe this? So, there is a person, a cartographer called as Al Idrisi. So, Al Idrisi, he, he was, you know, he was an Arab uh, geographer and he wrote, you know, designed this map in 1154. Look at the map of India, guys. Guys, how, how would you study this map? You tell me. Is there any one place you can identify in this map? Vandana <laughs> is saying, sir, he mailed it ulta pulta. Yeah, in one way, that's right. See, the top portion which you see is Sri Lanka. Would you believe that? It is Sri Lanka. Okay. So, the map that was used in the olden days was drastically different. And geographically, the regions were also a bit different, guys. That is why even these geographers started looking at the, the areas, the land in different ways. The countries in different ways. Now, moving on to probably 600 years later. See, in 1720, French cartographer designed the other map. You see the second map, right? That map, I am sure you are able to identify. But do you see a big, big change in the second map also? What is the you know biggest change? If you you know carefully observe the second map, you will be able to identify that change. The second map is in fact a little too detailed. Look at the coastal regions. Do we have so many places? It's like you mentioning the names of every street next to next. The entire coastal region is flooded with different areas, right? And imagine how detailed this French cartographer has designed this map. That was the best part, my dear kids. So you need to understand the way people looked at history, all right? The, uh, the country or geographical regions was never the same between years. When you look at the same area in a different period, it was looked at from a different perspective. The map shows it all. Now, the same way in 1720, look at it. I hope you understand. Yes? All right. So, map 2 is very familiar to us. From a shape perspective, design perspective, it is very familiar. But coastal areas, which I just said, right? In the map 2, coastal areas are a lot detailed. It's like every street is mentioned. So many. Right? This is one more. And map 2, you know who used map 2? European sailors used map 2 during their voyages to India from and to. All right, India, to and fro. So, my dear kids, please remember, a person who maps maps is called a cartographer. Cartographer is whom? A person who makes maps. Clear? Now, coming to new and old terminology. Okay, guys, let's take the word Hindustan. I just gave an example of foreigner, the word foreigner. Let's take another example of Hindustan. Okay, so before that, so please remember historical records, they exist in different ways and in different languages. Guys, do not look at what I am teaching today as just a kind of piece of information. I want you to enjoy it and imbibe it. This is so interesting to study what has happened, how to study what has happened, you know, thousands of years ago. Now, the difference, as I said, the records exist in different languages in different ways. Number one. Now, so that means people, things would have changed a lot. If I want to understand the meaning, what exactly was the meaning of foreigner which was written 500 years ago, it is very, very tricky. 
I need to study multiple chronicles, inscriptions to find out what context, what context someone wrote something. I hope you are understanding the con you know what I am trying to explain. So it is not a it was never a easy job for a historian. Please remember this. So the difference is not just with grammar and vocabulary. Even meanings have just started changing. Let's take an example. The term Hindustan. We say Hindustan, right? The term Hindustan was used in 13th century by Minaj He Siraj. He was a chronicler, all right, who sat, who wrote chronicles in Persia, in the Persian language. Okay, and according to him, Hindustan means areas between Punjab, Haryana, and uh, the area surrounding Ganga and Yamuna. So according to him, Hindustan means this. So that means at that time, whatever he has written. He would have written Hindustan from this context only, right? Can we then go ahead and believe that? You know, start relying on that. It's very, very tricky, my dear kids. I hope you should understand. Now, let's look at Hindustan from a differ different uh, perspective. In 16th century, all of us know Babur, right? Babur termed used Hindustan, all right, for describing the geography, flora, fauna, and the culture of the inhabitants of the entire subcontinent. So, who started it all? Babur in the 16th century. Right. And in 14th century, poet Amir Khusrau, he used the word Hind. Okay. 14th century, he used the word Hind. And so, that means, please remember the word Hindustan does not carry a single meaning. I, I want you to remember, even quiz, it is very, very essential. Quiz questions will come in this. So now, uh, for us, we call it as India. India means what? The modern state containing, uh, nations containing so many states. Everyone clear with this? Lovely, guys. Now, sources of history. Okay. So if I have to study thousands of years ago, I need to have some sources, right? What are those sources? Historians studied coins, inscriptions, architecture, books, etc. I repeat, coins, inscriptions. I told you yesterday what are inscriptions, right? Anything written on hard surface is called as an inscription. Architecture, text, textbooks. All right, these are the things that they relied on to study history. That existed hundreds of years ago. Okay, that was the source of information for them. And however, that you know, it was so complicated. Guys, all of you are aware, all softwares have different versions, right? And I hope you are also aware, even books have different versions. Okay, all these books, in the olden days, whatever books that were written, they were kept in archives. Archive is a, a place where they preserve this information. But you know what? When you look at one book and start thinking that, it, you know, that is the truth, he would have written another version. The author would have written another version. Like this, so many places, historians misunderstood information also. It was too challenging for them. I want you to understand this. So, sources of history, coins, inscriptions, manuscripts, everything. Paper. Guys, when did paper arrive in India? Any idea? Yeah, yeah, quiz, we will come. Guys, remember, your, your vacation time is over. Now you have to study a little. So, that is why to make it interesting, we will teach you 15-20 minutes, after which we will go for the quiz. Alright, we will go for the quiz in 5 minutes, guys. So, for until then, I want you to focus. Please. Alright? Lovely. So, when did paper arrive? Okay, great. 1600 years ago. Very close. Very close. So, during medieval India, paper gradually it became more widely available. Paper was used all right, to write more of spiritual chronicles. Or they call it as holy text. The rulers, they wanted to write, you know, their biography kind of things. Saints wanted to write their advices, teachings. And judicial, they wanted to keep their records, write their records. Okay? So, these are the uses of paper. Now, what are we right now doing? We are studying different tools which helped us to study history thousands of years ago. <clears throat> Got it? Now, the next one is manuscripts. Manuscripts, not everyone was able to have manuscripts. Remember, manuscripts were written either in palm leaves 
or the bark of the tree which is called birch right manuscripts were generally used by very wealthy people uh, kings and queens monasteries temples etc and all what was written they were kept either in temples libraries and archives guys all of you remember manuscripts were the major source of information to study history because it was purposefully written okay so i want you guys to store it very carefully okay guys can you tell me do you remember any manuscript that is available that you had seen around you it could be in any temple any place can you ping me now sir i have seen a manuscript <coughs> which was dated inscriptions we can see in all temples multiple temples if you go to old temples you will definitely see inscriptions but manuscripts <coughs> okay so those are replicas they are not true manuscripts okay ramayana mahabharat you are saying right those are replicas so what is an archive guys archive is a place where all the manuscripts documents historical stuff is stored <coughs> today all national and state governments have archives to store the records for every state there will be an archive it's called a treasury remember it is called a treasury all of you remember this okay miniature paintings so sometimes people did not have manuscript you know option to write manuscripts there was no printing press they started writing you know scribbling it it's called scribbling manuscripts by hand that was called as a miniature painting because of the small the size of the manuscript it is called as a miniature okay they also illustrate the text of manuscripts what is the difficulty it's not that easy to write like that number 1 and whatever they have written my dear kids it is not easy to remember also it is not easy to find out what they have written because language is very difficult to find out okay and third thing they would have written multiple things multiple copies very difficult to find out the original manuscript of an author today we are totally dependent upon the copies made scribes their copies merely so historians have to study different manuscripts to identify what exactly was the context in which the author author has written something clear guys look at two two uh, handwriting styles one is called nastalik style the other is called shikaste nastalik style is more cursive in nature and it is easy to study considerably shikaste is not like that shikaste is very difficult because the writing was too condensed one after the other weaved you got it so these are two styles of writings in the manuscripts typically persian and arabic one is called nastali the other is called shikaste got it lovely kids all right i think we are moving towards the quiz now everyone is ready so authors of the medieval period also revised their chronicles at different times guys remember this there was one author ziauddin barani he wrote his chronicle in 1356 and he had written another version of it after 2 years 1358 but our guys did not see the latest version every historian was thinking that his first chronicle was the actual chronicle in 1960s only they discovered the latest version the second version from the archive so these are things that can happen okay right guys so guys all ready for menti quiz i hope you guys so it was useful give me a yo guys let's start come on yo 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 awesome guys awesome here we go here comes your menti <clears throat> so the code is 90 2658 i repeat 902658 quick 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 jump jump into menti guys it's quite a short quiz 
so i want you guys to make it <coughs> completely i want you to pounce on it come on come on come on guys go to menti people who are new you have to go to www.menti.com m e n t i menti.com and type the code 902658 getting it lovely okay see immediately everyone started moving out of youtube hey guys be there in youtube also here yeah. don't just jump to menti alone okay guys so many have not joined come on how much time you want me to wait hardly 150 of you joined there are 300 people here come on fast guys ayush come on beta you got to wait right dwai payan Okay guys i hope i am audible now <clears throat> am i all right guys here we go for the first question be ready Okay guys I'm going to start the quiz Here we go Oh no Is that a yes? All right. Sorry, guys. I think uh, some problem with the connection happened suddenly. These are problems that happen when uh, you know we take the sessions from home, right? You got to blame Corona only, not me. Okay. All right. Just kidding. Shall I start now? Here we go. My dear kids. Question number one. Here we go. Answer fast. Who is a cartographer? Who is a cartographer? A person who makes mind maps, a person who makes maps, a person who creates knowledge of understanding of facts, a person who interprets understanding. Who is called a cartographer? Come on guys. Time is running, time is running. Three, two, one. Time's up. Okay, hundred and sixty-four. First slide. What I took was this. How can you guys forget this? Cartographer is someone who makes maps. A person who makes maps is called as cartographer. Lovely. So now we want to look at the leaderboard. Who chose it the fastest? Let's figure out. Ramit, Ramit is topping the list. S second one, Sundar. Thank you. I don't want to read it. No, I know you. Notorious guys here. You guys are. 
தேவ் தருண் ஓகே எல் வி ஆர் ஐ மை காட் சிவேன் ஷாலோ மிஷானி சாக்கோ ஃபிசல் சென் லவ்லி டு சி ஆல் யூ गाइस so here we go question number 2 All right the dash period generally falls between 700 and 100 you know 1750 700 to 1000 1750 is called medieval ancient modern contemporary which is the right answer a b c or d pick it up guys come on let me see everyone jumped out of youtube now come on guys go back to youtube Time is up. Well done, well done. I clearly said in the last slide. Remember, medieval period. It was medieval period. Okay, so seven hundred to one thousand seven fifty. We were dealing this entire session was about what kind of changes, developments happened in the medieval period. Okay, one hundred and eighty-two of you got it right. And who was the fastest to do that? Let's find out. Yeah, guys. It's me, guys. Sundar, followed by Dev, followed by Choco Fizzle, followed by Sid, Elvina. Okay, bottom five: Kavya, Shalom, Maditya, Deer, and Dragon. So, Deer, now you change your name to Deer, the archaeologist, eh? Lovely. Okay. Who is Minaji Siraj? Who is Minaji Siraj? Geographer, historian, chronicler, both two and three. Guys, this is how I started with his name only. The entire session I started with his name. He is a historian and a chronicler, Minaji Siraj. Remember, I showed one for uh, image also. I don't know whether you guys remember or not. So leaderboard, I think Sid has come up now. No, no, no. I think Sid missed it. Elvina might top the list. No, Lovish. Lovish, shall I call it Lovish? Lovish, Elvina, Shehanshu, Sid, Himesh, right? Uh, go Cor, go Corona. Thank you for the name here. At least for your sake, it let it go. Dragon, Dia, Amanjit, Balvin, superb, lovely guys, lovely. So my dear kids, next question. on your screens name the place where documents and manuscripts are stored national park zoological garden monument archive time is running Last three seconds. National Park, Zoological Garden. All right, archive. Great guys, great. Now most of you got this right. Leader board now. So any change? Elvina, Sehangshu, Sid, Himesh, Dia, followed by Dragon, Lovish, Go Corona, Balvin, and Shubham. Great job, guys! Elvina is stopping the list now. Come on. Next question on your screens. Who is a scribe? Who is a scribe? Someone who serves as a professional copyist. Okay, person who made copies of manuscripts before the printing press. A person who illustrates texts of manuscripts. All of them. Come on, guys! Come on! Come on! Come on! Pick yourself up. All right.
right all of them guys someone who you know is he copies he take copies of manuscripts and he illustrates text of manuscripts also they illustrate Le leaderboard now elvina is there a change ah sehan shu is stopping now followed by elvina lovesh said and himesh next question guys on your screens why did people in the medieval period use paper why did they use paper it became cheaper it was available widely it was fragile both one and two come on this sir i i'm sure you should be able to nail this guys listen to the options carefully last 5 seconds how many of you chose d well not bad yaar 147 of you chose d lovely to see that who are they the fastest ones sehang shu all right still topping the list followed by lovesh said himesh vamsi dragon grace janvi rehan and musikaran right guys next quest the last question come on guys pick it up pick out the source which was used by historians for studying the medieval period coins and inscriptions textual records monuments all of this simple question quickly answer come on time is running don't miss it guys quick all right time is up let me see who got it right lovely 160 of two of you got it right superb to see that now who is leading the leaderboard now wow i think it is sehan shu guys sehan shu is topping the list lovesh said himesh well done sehan shu well done keep it up beta keep it up 6820 points followed by said lovesh said himesh vamsi followed by kreesh janvi mosikaran srikaran siddharth well done guys well done hey kids did you enjoy the session today you also understood how important it is so if at all you have not subscribed please hit the subscribe button now and remember to enable the bell icon guys lovely my dear kids it was wonderful wonderful you know speaking to all you guys i hope you it was a useful kind of informative enlightening session i loved it i don't know about you guys i'm sure you would that's why you are in young wonders we believe every child is special guys lovely so until i meet you guys tomorrow this is myself sundar rabindranath signing off guys bye bye enjoy the day participate in all other sessions guys